Uh, Mr. Secretary, in uh, September of this year, your State Department's Inspector General revealed that Embassy Kabul, under your leadership, abandoned, quote, sensitive security assets, unquote, during the deadly Afghanistan evacuation. Those lethal assets include firearms, armored vehicles, and other weapons. Your IG concluded the embassy left them intact for the Taliban. And if that wasn't bad enough, documents, classified documents, many that I subpoenaed, also reveal that you left behind droves of the embassies, again, classified documents, to the Taliban. Your own diplomats described desperate attempts to burn documents on the rooftops and in the embassy while helicopters took off the embassy's roof, very reminiscent in my younger life of Saigon. All because the administration failed to prepare. Finally, your chief of mission kicked out the embassy's Afghan employees from HKIA, telling them to come back later, leaving them to the Taliban, who never made it back, who never survived who we gave our trust to that we would protect them. You left weapons behind to the Taliban, classified documents to the Taliban. You left behind embassy employees to the Taliban. And now three years later, your own IG, Inspector General, concluded that your State Department has been unwilling and unable to learn from its mistakes. My question is, have you read the IG report and have you held your own State Department accountable? Mr. Chairman, first, with uh, regard to uh, the documents, uh, we have in place at every embassy, including in Afghanistan, a process by which sensitive documents are destroyed in the event uh, of an evacuation and shutting down the embassy. We began that process on August the 1st. Uh, and then when we got to August the 12th, before the collapse of Kabul, uh, we proceeded with the emergency destruction of all of the remaining sensitive documents. And that process was complete by the 14th, a day before Kabul fell. Uh, that's a process that we engage in wherever we have an emergency. And that's exactly we're what we're my time. Again. I mean, the fact is, they should have been evacuated long before. I mean, <clears throat> you were still negotiating as the Taliban entered Kabul. Uh, the embassy should have been, as the military advised you to do, evacuate that embassy. Uh, let me ask you this. When um, President Biden announces unconditional surrender to the Taliban on April the 14th, 2021. You demanded that Embassy Kabul remain open, no matter what the cost. Your personnel um, opposed that. In fact, they did so in a, a cable dissent that we were able to get from you in our discovery process, a cry for help. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs to the CENTCOM commander, Millie McKenzie said, this was a fundamental mistake a fatal flaw, and their biggest regret is keeping the embassy open despite the advice of your own people on the ground and military advisors. Why did you do that? Uh, very simply, because no one anticipated that the government and the Afghan armed forces would collapse as quickly as they did. We anticipated, and every intelligence assessment that we had anticipated, that Kabul would remain uh, in the hands of the government, in the hands of the Afghan armed forces, through the balance of the year and I into mean, the next year. I mean, we're my time out because well, I want to say. Well, let me please, let me finish. I will uh, let you finish. Uh, the, chairman, uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Mark Milley, said, nothing I or anyone else uh, say, uh, saw indicated a collapse of the army or the government in 11 days. The DNI, Avril Haines said, in the days leading up to the Taliban takeover, uh, intelligence agencies did not see collapse as imminent. This unfolded more quickly than they anticipated, <clears throat> including uh, in the intelligence community. Okay, reclaim my time. I, I hear what you're saying, uh, that no one saw the collapse coming. However, I've read the dissent cable, your embassy personnel, uh, that you provided to me, that they sent to you in July, before the collapse in 2021, warning of Afghanistan's imminent collapse, fearing for their safety. You personally read this, sir, and cleared it, your Deputy Secretary, Brian McKeon, testified before this committee that you took no step to answer the cries for help. And as you know, Secretary of State, you have 
a responsibility to protect Americans and diplomats. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's incorrect. Why did you ignore the cries for help? Why did you leave this embassy open? And finally, who was in charge? Was it you or Mr. Sullivan? Because it seems to me you delegated all your responsibility on this. You had very little to do with it, and it was Jake Sullivan and the National Security Council at the White House calling all the shots. However, under law, sir, you are the captain of the ship. Mr. Chairman, that's incorrect on a number of counts, as is the report that I've read. First, when it comes to an, uh, a NEO, uh, the evacuation, that is a decision that's reached by the entire interagency and ultimately by the President. The State Department initiates it by asking the Department of Defense uh, to proceed with it, but the decision itself is reached as a result of interagency deliberations. And we did not, as an interagency, and that includes the um, Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the, the yeah, National Security Advisor, the charge? President. This is going to help us so, legislate, no, this is sir. Important. Were you in charge of this evacuation? I was in charge of the State Department. The, the government, the administration, was in charge of the evacuation. Specifically, the State Department and the Department of Defense together on any NEO work closely together with clearly assigned responsibilities, and that's exactly and what we did. And it is the and statutory responsibility, until sir, it was for you to issued. execute the plan, correct? The NEO, the NEO was executed by the State Department and the Defense Department. I, and I would have to say, sir, waiting till the last minute is not executing a plan at all. And it led to the deaths of many Again, Americans Chairman, and Afghan people and Afghan allies. Mr. Chairman, the record reflects that, again, this decision was reached collectively. Uh, no one uh, urged initiating the NEO until we decided to do it on the 14th. I think in my review of our investigation, there was so much confusion coming out of your embassy, coming from the top military advisors who told me, testified that they told you to close down that embassy in advance to protect Americans and American assets and classified that is documents. Correct. They were left to the Taliban. You were in charge by law. You may have delegated this. I don't know. But to legislate moving forward, I need to know who was in charge. And that's why it is so important that Mr. Sullivan the National Security Advisor, come before this committee and give his testimony about what the hell was going on during this disastrous evacuation. With that, I now recognize the ranking member.